Hi, I'm Bob Hot Rod Roar from Cluffy, and I want to go over the procedure for soldering the new low lead brass alloys that are on the market. Here's one of our quick setter plus valves, and it is a, as you can see right on the side there, it's a low lead alloy that we use. And it solders a little bit differently than the fittings that you're used to, so I'm going to quickly go through the procedure of how to prepare this, how to solder it, so you get a leak free, uh, perfect joint every time. So, the first thing that we want to do anytime we solder, of course, is prep the pipe. Now, anytime you cut pipe with a displacement type cutter, you're going to have a burn there. It's important, especially on hydraulics, that you ream that burr out so we don't get turbulence caused by that as the water brushes through there. So take a little pencil reamer, clean that out, get the deposits out of there. You want to clean it good. I like to use Scotch-Brite, scratch cloth, there's uh, tools that you can buy to do this also. Get it nice and clean, get all the markings off it, any uh, paint or anything that was on there from the uh, labeling. And then we want to flux it. Now flux more isn't better with flux, just a very thin layer on that. Go around that and just so you can barely see it. Some guys use a, a sponge instead of a brush so they don't over flux it because if you over flux it you're going to get some bubbles in there and you won't get a good joint. So thin layer on both the inside and out. We want to take this apart when we solder it so we don't damage the uh, components in there. So we'll take that off. Put that on there. I like to turn it a little bit, make sure the flux goes around, and now we're going to solder that joint. Now, this is what's key to soldering the low-lead brass alloys. It's, they don't conduct heat the way a leaded brass component does, so they're a little bit different thermal conductivity. So what happens is when you heat this, two things is going to happen. It's going to expand. You can see how that goes on there fairly snugly. Now, when you heat it up and it expands, it doesn't conduct the heat to the pipe, so what can happen is you get the brass too hot and the copper isn't warm enough to pull the solder in, and then you burn your flux. We've got water-soluble fluxes now that burn just a couple degrees over what the solder melts at, so we've got to be careful. And So what I'm going to do when I heat this up here is I'm going to heat the copper first out here. Typically, we just heat back here at the deep part so we pull the solder in. I want to warm the copper tube up first until I see that flux just start to go liquid, start to bubble a little bit. Then I'm going to move my torch to the back of the fitting and then the solder will pull in. That way we don't overheat the brass, burn the flux, and we make sure that the solder pulls into the warmest point of uh, the joint where the torch is. So that's the procedure for doing it. So um, let's give it a try. Now a couple things you notice there, I took the heat away as soon as the solder started dripping because I don't want to overheat that and the other thing is it's pulled into the joint and the first time it drips you stop putting the solder in because there's no need to put solder in if it's dripping on the floor the joint's filled it's either going to go inside your pipe or waste solder so you can see that joint filled it up nicely no drips and um, I'll cool that off wet sponge after a minute or two so we get the flux off it and there you have it. 